So our next project is going to be making metal crosses. I have two examples right here. Now these crosses are pretty um, expressive, pretty freeform in nature. You're, you can make more traditional crosses if you like. I just went for um, being really expressive when I made these two crosses here. Also, if you notice, right in the center there is a geode. Um, we're going to be cutting open geodes and putting them in the center of our crosses. We're going to be using five different tools. We're going to be using a chop saw, a MIG welder, a forge, a anvil, and a pipe cutter. All of these tools will go over in class and you guys will have a great time using them and I'm sure everyone will um, learn a lot through this project. Alright, here we go. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about geodes and how they are formed. They start out as hollow places inside of stone, okay, inside of rock. And over time, water starts bringing minerals um, into this hollow space and they move, the minerals are left behind as the water drains out. And uh, these minerals create crystals like this. Uh, most geodes have interiors that are made up of quartz or calcite. The geos that we're going to be using in class are from the Chihuahua Desert. Now I'm going to show you how to cut open the geo. We're actually using a pipe cutter to crack open these geos. Here we go. Fits into this little notch right here. We turn it clockwise, like so. Not a lot of crystals in this one, but it's still pretty cool. that we're going to use is the chop saw, which is this little baby right here. We're going to use the chop saw to cut our quarter inch steel stock. Remember, when you're using tools like this, always, always use eye protection, have gloves on, cover your clothes with some kind of jacket or something that you're um, not going to burn yourself because there's going to be a lot of sparks going everywhere. Now there's a bunch of little burrs on the end of this piece of metal. We're going to take an angle grinder and grind those off because you can cut yourself really easily with these, so please be careful. A lot of the tools that you'll be using can be found in a blacksmith shop. Now blacksmithing is a very ancient craft. Um, it hasn't changed a lot over hundreds of years. We're going to be using a forge, we're going to be using an anvil, and we might jump in and use a few of these hammers here, these blacksmith hammers. Uh, blacksmiths also use tongs. Here's a couple examples of some blacksmith tongs. Um, these tongs I created myself, these I bought. Both of them are handmade. One tool everybody will be using is um, this turning wrench right here. I actually made this. I took a pipe wrench and I welded a bar onto it. So you can um, grab onto a piece of metal and turn it like this. This is what 
creates those wonderful twists and turns in your crosses, and I think you will have a lot of fun using this tool. Let me introduce you to the anvil. The anvil is probably the most ubiquitous tool that you will find in a blacksmith shop. This is the face of the anvil right here. This is the horn, this is the hardy hole, and this is the pritchel hole. You can use these holes to um, put um, different attachments in, like this. Um, I actually made this bending fork myself in my blacksmith class, and you would take a piece of heated metal, held with tongs, of course, let's pretend this has been heated, and you would take it and bend it on this fork here. If you notice, I'm not wearing gloves. Blacksmiths do not wear gloves because they want to be able to, to really feel the metal. As the metal cools, it gets harder to work with and it resists. And having gloves on it takes away um, that feeling of, of when the metal is becoming too hard to work with. Here are two blacksmith hammers, both made in France. Uh, if you notice, the handles of these blacksmith hammers have been charred just a little bit. That's because blacksmiths don't wear gloves and consequently they, um, they can easily get blisters if there's a finish on a handle of a hammer. This is the forge we're gonna be using. This forge is made by a company down in San Marcos called Chili Forge. They call this particular model a cayenne forge and it uses propane. It's a double burner. They call these Diablo burners. There's a entrance in either side of the forge and it's an oval shape. that we do is use a MIG welder to weld our two pieces of our cross together, like this. Voila! So our last step is to glue the geo to the cross, like so. Um, I think these are gonna be really awesome. I'm so looking forward to seeing what you guys create. All right, thanks a lot.
Thank you.